Hi. Right. There's been a little uh, confusion about um, some of the numbers um, in regards to voltages, etc., that are uh, necessary in order to run the uh, GL300 uh, remote. And uh, if you have a problem with the battery, um, or you get that type of error, uh, that's one of the problems uh, that have existed with these. And nobody yet has uh, come up with a way how to uh, get around uh, uh, not purchasing uh, another unit just because the battery um, or the uh, controller that's in it um, is bad. So I have some numbers and I have some ideas how we can bypass uh, um, half new purchase um, or, or repurchase another controller. Uh, one of the things I found out, I removed the battery. Uh, my battery was uh, showing that uh, it wasn't functioning at all. And um, this is what the battery is that normally that's in there. You cannot buy a replacement for it. Okay, there's the information on it. You can't buy it. Um, the, apparently the company doesn't sell them. Uh, I didn't check into it. I'm just taking for granted from all the other folks that were um, kind of mad about that. Um, and it is a standard 7.4 LiPo battery. Now, what I did is I took it apart because I wanted to come up with an idea how to backwards engineer this. But they have this little board in there. This little board. All right, this board sits upside down and it basically sits like this on the on the battery. Okay? Um, I tested my my battery Actually, my battery was okay. Turned out it was this small device. So how I check this, and you can too, um, is there's this little pigtail that will be on here. This is actually attached like this at these two points. So all of these wires are split. So you have red going to the positive side, and black going to the other side. Now that kind that was kind of funny because why would they double up the wires like that? Well, what I think it was an afterthought. Um, this little board, what it does, it's a balancer. And what they're doing is they're basically charging the battery with this charger that they're also charging that that 15, uh, I think it's a 15 volt. Um, uh, lipo that's the main battery uh, for the drone um, and what it does is it, it splits here and one part goes into the main battery and this one goes into the controller well they're both 17.5 uh, to 17.8 volts and that's what's necessary to to do the batteries well I found out is if you plug this into here right here okay which is the the charging port for the remote what it does is it appears there's a voltage that appears here at 8 point eh, it's right around about 8.2 volts so that means that it's regulated and I believe that that's what they were originally charging the battery for before they felt that they would rather go and put a device on it um, that will uh, monitor the uh, differential in the charging rates um, on the LiPo batteries. It's good engineering practice, and that's basically why this was added, and I think it was an afterthought. Um, okay, uh, I'm sorry, what happened was somebody called on the phone. So, <clears throat> we found out that we have 17 volts here, we have 8 point, like 8 point, uh, 2, 8.2, 8.3, um, it's just... Uh, it's, a, it's enough to charge the uh, LiPo batteries in series instead of charging in parallel. Um, so that's, that's what I found. Um, again, um, this little board turned out it was bad. And how this works is it basically works one way for charging, and then when there's no longer any voltage going through it and the battery is now supporting it, it allows voltage... Uh, to go back at uh, um, 
nominal, which is uh, 7.4, uh, back to the board and uh, run the uh, uh, run the remote. Okay. What I have coming is a, a LiPo battery that's actually 3,500 uh, milliamper hours, um, 7.4 um, uh, type of cell coming, which is very close to the same size as this. Um, this battery turns out to be about 120 millimeters uh, long, um, about 50 millimeters wide, and about 17 millimeters thick. Well, the battery that I purchased is very, it's very similar, uh, but it's only 3,500 uh, milliamper hours instead of the 6,000 that this is. Not a big deal because um, that amount of um, power will run this controller for quite a long time. It just means that you're going to have a few more charges than you would normally um, have with the 6,000 amper hour battery. Um, okay, with that said, um, I uh, tested the unit uh, and to see. So what I basically did is I put the uh, eight point. I put about eight point um, three um, volts in this variable supply, and I only hooked them up to the two reds that are hooked together and the two blacks that go on that that device that I or connector that I cut off of here or unsoldered from here and I'm going to turn this on and you can see I'm getting about 8 volts reading on here I don't know if you can see that or not but take my word for it and then I'll go through the sequence of starting the controller okay and you see the red light came on and then all the lights have lighted up showing that the battery of course is um, fully charged. Stay on this for a second. What I'm going to do is reduce this voltage a little bit and you'll see that some of the bars will come off of there sometimes. Sometimes it takes a while for them to, to do that. Let's see. Of course it's going to make a liar out of me. Oh, just went off. But uh, as it comes down slowly, uh, it'll actually, or if I start out with a lower voltage, like right now I've got a lower voltage on it. Let me start it up. And you can see that it's just showing one. Okay? And the, the little beeper's going off. We can shut it off. Um, and we can shut it off. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. Um, I didn't show you how to take this apart because um, there's many other videos like that. I just want you to know that there's about uh, um, 8.3 volts necessary to, to uh, run it. Um, this little uh, device here, again, is nothing more than a, uh, a balancer. Um, these two resistors here are the resistors that are using a balance circuit. Um, kind of went through this and that's what it is. It's kind of like a one-way. Um, it allows the charging to go in there, divides it, charges each cell individually, uh, but when the charger is out, then it combines the voltages of the two batteries and comes out, and uh, you have your 8.4 or 8.3 volts when it's fully charged. So that's what I found so far. I have the battery coming. I'm going to run some tests on it after I get it. Um, I'll put the connectors on it, go through it, make sure that it works, and at that time I'll uh, divulge what battery and that. So folks aren't going out trying to buy the battery that I'm trying, and it may not work. So I don't want you to go through all that trouble. But I'm going to give that a shot, and we'll see if we can uh, get it all put together. Um, that's about all I know about this. Um, I've pretty much told you about. Um, I've checked to make sure this was DC coming out of here. Uh, put it on a scope, checked everything out. Um, this puts out about 17.5 to 17.8, little variable there. And um, so all the numbers are good. It looks like we're going to be able to pull this off, and hopefully the guys that have problems uh, can get their uh, uh, remotes back uh, running. Okay, thanks.